This is what my Brooklyn, New York City studio looked like right when I moved in in April 2021. And this is what it looked like after about 18 months of constantly evolving and upgrading the space. It's been amazing and still pretty hard for me to believe that I have a space like this. An insanely functional production and art studio it's been put to amazing use by me and dozens of other artists. But it's time for a change. This will be the biggest renovation since moving in here about 28 months ago. Here's the general theory and narrative of this renovation studio upgrade era three. I'm making more room in this main area for figure drawing classes and art classes. I'm going to move the entire painting area into the podcast studio. So that means everything on this carpet, uh, shelves, you know, illustration boards, tools, paint, easel, these French cleats, even this light, that all needs to fit in here in the podcast room. It's a smaller room, but it's big enough. It looks maybe smaller on camera. This huge podcast desk is ginormous. Everything in there is gonna come in here. And that means everything in here, which is so much stuff you can't imagine, but it's all gonna be broken down. I'll still be able to do podcasts anywhere. I have all the equipment, but that means all of these canvases, so much stuff, all of that has to leave this room and fit somewhere out there. And that's sort of the plan. There's so many other things I'm doing. I don't need to walk you through every shelf I'm gonna build. Also just in general, like, this area over here, so much storage, and I'm gonna need even more storage. Pretty much the peripheral of all of here, I meant the perimeter, and over here with the tool storage, all of that's gonna be optimized and cleaned. I'm gonna have to purge a lot. Purging begins. I'm very excited to clean if, clean out everything. You know, I, I love this room. I spent so long and so much money building this podcast setup, um, collecting all this junk for the set. The podcast is not stopping, just by the way, I love the podcast. I just only do one episode a month, maybe, and so this room is not being used efficiently. I could do the podcast anywhere else, but um, cleaning it all out to work from a blank slate to rebuild into the dream painting setup yet again, I am very excited about this. This is gonna drop while I like resituate, so you're just gonna have to hold onto the slate. Got it? Maybe don't hold it by the glass. I need to move this light up for the painting panel that's gonna come, but it's really tricky with this sheet metal sort of ceiling, but that's the plan. <laughs> All the dust, look at this. Oh my God. It didn't fit through the door. I'm certainly not in a rush to do this renovation. I'm actually really excited. I've been thinking about it since like before the spring, like in March almost. Now I have time, but the longer there's just like crap everywhere and the painting area is sort of broken down, which it's gonna be three, four days, hopefully that I could get everything back up. But the longer it's out, the longer I can't use it in the studio isn't like, in a functional form. So I'm sort of in a lackadaisical rush to figure this all out. There's a lot of storage and nitty gritty stuff that I need to figure out and figure out fast. All of this painting stuff, equipment, needs to be in the, the podcast room, the new painting room. Main thing I'm bringing, which I love, is the French cleats. It's the best setup, saves a lot of room with tripods and easels and things like that. Save thy screws. Also, I just wanted to remark on this tool. This is a mall stick, M-A-H-L. You see me going like this to hold my wrist. This is like my favorite tool ever. It's got a nice bow on it, but it has like little flakes of every paint color and mixture from every oil painting I've ever done. So it's sort of like a wand of history and I love it. Oh, what's heavy? Pop quiz, French cleats, what are they? Why are they so simple? They're basically a 45 degree cut and you can attach it to anything, the corresponding side. So this is a tooth right here and that just slots in to its corresponding tooth. That's why you have many levels so you can move anything, but you can attach them to canvases. You can attach them to these easels like right here and Bob's your uncle. You know, I, I talk a lot about these French cleats and how I built them in the original studio build from way long ago. So I would highly recommend it, but I love French cleats and I'm taking them into the new room for sure. So it is pretty nostalgic breaking down this painting setup. This painting as the flagship was one of the first canvases I did back in 2014, pretty cool. But the best part of this setup, this painting setup was this light panel. It's super even. 
Um, it's super beautiful. There's no glare, but it's really finicky. I bought these panels. I made this jerry rig frame and I jerry rigged it with chains and bolted it to the ceiling. The ceiling's like this weird sheet metal, like I said, so it's really tricky hanging it and I do my best here and I think I got it. That's as much as I could do by myself. As much as I want to do it all by myself, I need help and I want to be safe hanging this light up. And are we both getting on this ladder? <laughs> yeah? yeah. I do think I have the original paint that I used to paint this wall gray over two years ago. So we gotta check out what I got because I wanna paint that wall gray as well. Where I paint, I like that middle value. So I need to paint some more gray. Always mix more than you think, that's the rule. Something you gotta be careful about also when trying to match colors is that paint dries darker. So we gotta mix a color, put it on the wall, and then watch it dry. It takes like five, six minutes, and then you could tell if it's actually matched or not. It doesn't need to be perfect, but. All right, that's pretty darn close. I got pretty close there. A smidge more black, but I'm not a stickler in there. You're never gonna be able to tell. It's pretty much there. And I wanted to spackle up these drywall a little. There's a bunch of holes everywhere, just really quickly, really easy, before I painted. I had this from originally when I got the studio, and oh! It's no good anymore. It's rock solid in a weird space alien color. I'm going to get some more. Secured the bag. Just a little maintenance so I can sleep well at night to fill these cracks. Not a big deal. It's crazy to forget how much space there actually is in this room. That giant podcast table took out so much room. It's a really a uh, big space, plenty enough for a painting studio. Even just having this would be a dream. I'm very lucky, I wanna reiterate that I do not take any of this for granted. I have to pinch myself every day. I also work really, really hard to keep the studio, to keep paying monthly rent, to keep um, inviting artists and making videos. So it, it's being used uh, every single day, literally, I think 300 and probably 50 days of the year, something's going down. Thank goodness I had John here to help me move these big things and I am so excited to upgrade this editing setup. Um, I'm retiring this waifu desk mat um, for the Brandon Sanderson Words of Radiance. If you know, you know, but you know, having this setup, being able to stand is really great. majority hit my shorts and me sock. Both dirt bag, by the way, shout out. I like the box. It's kind of centered between the two outlets right there as well as the light above. Um, so everything's sort of centered on this wall. Pretty nicely working with what I got here, but time to drill the French cleats in. Great success. These are all pretty spaced out evenly, about three, four inches. And then once we get to these two, they're raised higher just in case I need to go higher. And it's just amazing. The French cleat system is the best. Look at this. So, very, very stoked on this and very stoked on how it looks. How it's kind of just a square, gray square within it all. It's very satisfying. There is so much crap and junk to be done in this big room, but I am gonna leave that to later and we're gonna do some customizing. I've been wanting to use all of these Polaroids from the past uh, two years that I took mostly from the podcast. And I thought this was a great, cool way to display them, also give some privacy. The podcast is not stopping, by the way. Um, like I said before, it's just this room needs to be more efficient. But we are decluttering and we are painting some of these accents to match the, the gray. And I am turning this into something that like my bedroom you know i've done this my whole life every wall space every bedroom every dorm i've ever been in school college i've customized and 
put paintings up and just use the wall space. This is a bootleg version of how to hang this frame. I have this beautiful frame and this painting of this hand, one of my favorite paintings. It doesn't fit, so I just taped it to fit. It's a bit bigger than the actual frame, but I'm just drilling in here and using some of this old twine, very thin kind of crappy twine, and I'm putting it in this drill and sort of threading it and twisting it so it becomes stronger. So I could use this as the little cord to hang up this beautiful sort of heavy frame. And that is a MacGyver Jerry rig setup, but it works wonderful. I've done that quite a few times. I honestly feel like I'm a professional painting uh, hanger at this point, drilling into brick, finding different ways to hang little tapestries and things. It is one of my best traits. I'm not afraid to say it without doubt. Um, but just, just working. These uh, are really fun times. This room is going to evolve more. You know, I'm just sort of getting it set up baseline to then uh, I'll, I'll have more things to add over time. Of course, as, as life goes, um, thought I'd touch it up with some Christmas lights. I think that's great. And we're moving on to this gigantor space. I want this to be a little gallery corner with just table space for drawing materials during the drawing classes, which I'll talk about later. Um, and it's just a mess, but this is a really great opportunity, again, to sort of finesse and customize this wall space because it's really, really tall ceiling. So I really just want to display as much art as possible and just make it really inviting and warm and, and swaggy. That's like my favorite thing to do. So these, these canvases, actually there was a fourth one, an orange one, one of my favorite videos and projects I've ever made. I think these just pop so much and they're just gorgeous and I'm glad they got a front and center spot on this big wall space. And again, just customizing, just making this really inviting for people and fun for videos. So not a bad way to end the day, a nice sunset. We did probably like 10 hours straight, moving, cleaning, hanging. Tomorrow we got a lot more to do, but I should have a final reveal tomorrow, just some more organization, really excited. Coming back in the morning is amazing. I get to marvel in all the amazing work we did yesterday, but also frightened by how much more I have to do. There is just crap everywhere in this main space. This main space is going to be for art classes. That's the genesis of this entire renovation to make room for art classes and everything. I'm starting this organization called Studio Slew. It's just to have more figure drawing classes, have artist demos, have uh, instructors come, and it's just a social, um, quasi atelier here in my own studio. There will be a website for people to sign up on classes. Not yet. This will be in the coming weeks and maybe month and I'll have a no, another full video talking about it. But this is a perfect time to talk about the sponsor Squarespace because I was able to make the most unbelievable platform using Squarespace. They are the best website online to make a website. They make it so easy. They have award-winning templates. They have 24 hour customer service. My website is private. You won't be able to go to it yet. But I had my friend help me develop it because there's all these things I want like sign up classes, on calendars and they have third party extensions to add so many different e-commerce and business tools to your own websites. It's very powerful and amazing. So if you wanna display your art beautifully or make a new business online, I highly recommend checking out Squarespace. Go over to Squarespace for a free trial or go to squarespace.com slash Lou for 10% off if you wanna buy a domain or build a website. Uh, more information about my whole art school and the things going on, there's gonna be way more information very soon, but let's get back to building. I can't really stress enough how much I really enjoy all of this. I don't know if I could do this every day, week after week, but it's such a nice change of pace um, to really spring clean, organize, rearrange, sort of resituate my entire studio, which is a sort of, you know, a function of my life. I'm here more than anywhere in the world and I love it and I work here. So reorganizing and sort of building on a new slate for the future, uh, a blank slate, a new chapter. It is just quite enjoyable. And I have so many plans and I have to really rein myself in from doing too much and going too hard. Um, but it, it's just a joy and it's been like the best week. I'm doing way more building uh, after this video for other parts of the organization, the art school, for the classes but this is this has just been amazing and i get to hang my little tchotchkes here on this little little bitty shelf all my tchotchkes from the podcast studio 
now have a home front and center. I need to hang this shield. It is unbelievably heavy. I tried to buzz it off and I ended up breaking it. I chiseled away and I got probably about 10 pounds off, but then I broke it. I re-glued it. You could follow me on Instagram actually. That's where I post fun things like that. But this, this is still like 25, 30 pounds. And so I definitely need a stud to hang it from this wall. That is me. All right, just hold this real quick. It should be fine. It wasn't really, wasn't that, it didn't look bad. Hopefully that will hold. Oh. Guys, it's being a little loud. Okay. Make sure I don't die again. You're definitely <laughs> afraid of heights. <laughs> no, not that. <laughs> yeah, I got you, boss. Whatever you need, boss. <laughs> This is so amazing. This is just at the bottom of this pile of uh, drawing boards. And this was an amazing day here. Two models. Um, so we did all these crazy poses with them. One with a dagger, one with a rose, kneeling. We did some like fight poses. This was one of the most amazing drawing nights here at the studio. So we got pretty far in this room. I'm so happy with it. I want to show you what I did. You already really know, but it's hard to understand the flow of everything because there's going to be a lot more. I'm going to make another video building more for specifically the figure drawing and art classes. I'm building a new stage. I'm hanging more lights and doing more in the studio. Actually behind this, you know, it's still a bunch of junk. Um, we're doing the final review here of what I did, which is this main corner and the painting room. Um, still a lot, obviously, to also organize all the shelves, but this, these tables are gonna be filled with drawing materials because every uh, figure drawing class or art class, I provide all the materials. It's gonna be very cheap. You know, I'm still paying for all the models. I think it might be 10 bucks for people to come for like a three hour drawing session. But that's part of my organization and nonprofit is to provide materials and everything. So this is these tables will be set up with charcoal, pencils. We got a bunch of uh, obviously newsprint, drawing boards, everything will be set up. So that's this. I also have these awesome remotes um, that are triggered for uh, all these lights. So I got a light up here for the gallery. I got the Christmas lights and I got the light behind the Samurai, which is programmed on my phone with an LED. So the color can change whatever vibe we want. I kind of like blue a lot. Anyway, so that's all pretty set up. People could put their clothes here on this clothes hanger, which is really nice and big and just more space, surface area, surface area, surface area. That's what I love. And yeah, that's pretty much it um, for this area. This took so long. It's beautiful. It's a nice little gallery. It's just co cozy, warm vibes. Um, it will sort of be the backdrop of this drawing um, thing, which will be right where the camera is in a circle. But that's that. Let's go to the part that everybody wants to see, which is the painting setup, because I am so happy with this new home. First things first, of course, have to admire the uh, Polaroid memory wall from the podcast. Shout out to Tori, my girlfriend who did all that. I think that's just wonderful. Provides a little privacy. And then entering in here, it is amazing. There's so much space. It's very open right now. I do like the idea of just having a bunch of space just focused on the painting. So, you know, I have this all open and I'm pretty sure over time, I will fill more things in over here, of course, with storage. Um, there's a bunch to be done. Organization, of course. I have a lot of room under here for storage, some shelves. Things over here, maybe another desk or table or something, but it's all great. The cool thing is, I thought that I'd mention, is that this is the exact setup 
as the old uh, painting room. So I have my easel to my right. On this easel I built, I got my LCD sort of reference screen. Um, and then I have this portfolio case to my left for my computer to watch like podcasts or put other materials, easy grab. So I think that's great that it's the exact same setup. So I'm actually identical, identically familiar. It's just in an actual new environment. Um, and of course we got the light above, which is just amazing because that provides just beauteous light. Also, if you notice, I've changed the curtains that used to be uh, a gray big curtain on top and uh, that was for soundproofing. But now I just have these colored curtains which were under that originally. I think it brings some cool color in and it's just nice and warm and now you can't see very well, but I think it's just great. Um, and it's just sort of a vibe. It's just very warm and wonderful in here and happy. Similar to the other room, I have programmable um, things for the Christmas lights over there, as well as this light. So that's pretty great. And I could program more things in if I want other lights. I will be filming in here a lot, obviously. So in terms of um, filming, you know, I'll have to bring in another light. It will be a little uh, smaller, but it's plenty of space. I mean, I've filmed in my bedroom where I can only fit a bed. All the paintings hung up. Um, yeah, last but certainly not least, I got my editing set up here that's completely different on this hydraulic standing table. You know, it's important because I spend equal, if not more time here than the canvas. So it's important to have like a good um, setup. This is actually a bigger desk, more room, so I could use my computer here, which I use two computers simultaneously a lot. And then I can stand. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. I don't know how much this is really gonna boost productivity, but I get excited now. Um, and then I could just hit a button and she comes down to moi. So this is nothing revolutionary, but I got this for an insanely cheap price because someone in this uh, big building was giving it away. So now I am just very happy, very happy in my happy place. And I think, that, I think that's it. I don't know what else to say other than there's more videos coming out. Um, about the building of everything, as well as this portrait. This is coming out soon, this tutorial and video. And uh, yeah, just stay tuned for a lot of information. I had a blast with this video and I am gonna have a blast, continue to build and evolve the studio for Era 3, whatever you wanna call it. Entering the third year, amazing. See you in the next video.